So hello and a super duper warm welcome to everyone who is joining us on this live webinar today. My name is Sharon Mark Teggart and along with Dr. Sarah Cathcart, we are both the co-founders uh, and directors of The Curious Piano Teachers, which is an online membership site for piano teachers around the world. If you, um, if this is a first time to a Curious Piano Teacher webinar, I'm gonna get Sally just to type in a link to our website do head over there um, at your leisure and have a look. Um, and if you have any questions, our email is there, you can get in touch and let us know. So today we are uh, on the topic with Wendy Stevens, Music A Buzz With Adventure. And I just love the title, it just, it, it's kind of got, you know, lots of buzz about it. And um, I promise you it's going to be just as exciting as it sounds. Um, because we know when kids get excited about music, what do they get excited about? They get excited about practicing. Um, and making this happen is really key in the early weeks of lessons, particularly after summer break, summer vacation. And Wendy has composed some snazzy sounding new Music Kids Love, which is her registered trademark, Music Kids Love, and um, helping them explore all of the piano. Okay. And we love this at the Curious Piano Teachers. It's not just about in here, it's the entire keyboard um, and getting them to sound amazingly mature. Wendy's also going to be talking about uh, how experiencing comes for understanding why teaching music with solid pedagogy, that music sounds harder than it is, um, and how that's so crucial, to, so crucial to development. And she's also going to be talking a little bit um, more about um, teaching children with their perspective in mind. It's so important we listen to what they actually want to do and learn. So without further ado, I am going to invite Wendy to come in and join us. There she is. Hello, Hello Wendy. You are so welcome to the Curious Piano Teachers today. Can oh, you... thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It is absolutely our pleasure. <clears throat> And I'm aware that there's probably a little bit of a time delay because, of course, you are um, you are over there in the United States. Yes. I'm in, in Northern Ireland. Sally is right. over in England. Right. It is just amazing how we can all connect I in know, these things. It's amazing. I'm so glad about it, though, too. Yeah. <laughs> Brings us closer, doesn't it? Absolutely. It completely does. So, um, Wendy, I'm just going to hand over to you. Sure. Guys, this is Wendy Stevens from Compose Create. Uh, and again, we are going to be putting in um, the link over to Wendy's website in just a moment. Um, but of course, as I said previously, we will be sending out an email um, directly after this, uh, this webinar. And there will be more links and bits and pieces from Wendy in that. So do look out for those inboxes later on. In the meantime, we're going to be um, coming off screen, Sally and I, we're going to be manning the chat, so if you have any questions at any point, please do let us know and we can come back to you, Wendy, later with everyone's questions. So okay. over to you. Great to Thank have you here. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Sally and uh, Sharon. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about uh, my music and um, it's just fun to be able to do that. And I hope um, that all of you teachers who are here, um, not only um, get some good ideas for new music, but also just get some uh, hopefully helpful teaching um, tidbits that will just give you different perspective on how you're teaching and more effective maybe uh, ways of doing what you're already doing. So let me real quick share my slide deck with you. There we go. All right. Um, so Thank you again for coming. And um, if you ever have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and let me know. Um, uh, but I'm excited about bringing this music a buzz with adventure. And I'll talk, talk to you a little bit more about what I mean by that. Let's start though by um, just imagine with me for just a moment that there's a mom. And this mom wants to give her daughter, Sophie, a bike. Her daughter, Sophie, is five years old. And so she goes and she purchases this beautiful lavender bike. And um, she tells Sophie, Sophie, I've got a surprise for you. And they go out on the front lawn and she gives Sophie this beautiful bike. And Sophie is so excited about it. She's beside herself. She hugs her mom and she runs over to the bike and she starts touching it. And she just, she's literally, she 
shaking with excitement. She's so, so um, just interested in it and excited about writing it. And she starts to get on it. And her mom comes over there and pulls her away and says, Sophie, I'm excited about teaching you how to ride this bike too, but I want you to understand a little bit about the bike before I show you how to ride it. Now, you know that a bike is something that requires balance and balance is what happens when you when you have an equal amount of weight on the right side and the left side. And, and so I'm going to teach you how to balance on that on your bike. Isn't that exciting? And, and then um, balance actually requires on a bike, it requires you to be going a little bit, you may have to be moving. So you're going to have to be learning to move about two to three miles per hour. And I'll teach you how to do that too. And, and so moving two to three miles per hour, then you'll be able to balance. At this point, you should be saying, what is happening, right? As one um, lady in a webinar I did about this said, poor Sophie, we all know that Sophie is not going to learn to ride a bike by listening to her mother tell her about how to learn to ride a bike, right? She is going to learn to ride a bike because she's going to get on it and she's going to try it. She's going to experience it. And as she's experiencing it, her mother is going to give her instructions and help her, but not until she's actually on the bike will she actually learn to ride the bike. Too often, I think we're still doing this as teachers. I know we're getting better and, and um, it, it's true. I, I, know, I see teachers getting better at this, but I still think we, we kind of re, uh, lapse into this. We turn the method book page and we say, this is a quarter note and a quarter note gets one beat. And this is a half note and a half note gets two beats. And a half note is two times the amount of uh, length as a quarter note. And by this time, if you're teaching a child, they're thinking about something else. They're thinking about why they can smell supper at your house and, and what you're having for supper. They're thinking about the homework that they have. They're not really listening and it's not really sinking in because what, uh, with kids, um, experience comes before knowledge. Yes, you can tell someone how to ride a bike and all the things about riding a bike, but not until they experience will they actually be learning it. Same thing with eighth notes. You can tell a student an eighth note gets half the value of a quarter note and they look like this and blah, 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 um, but not until they experience those eighth notes in relationship to the quarter notes are they really getting it. It's different for us adults though, isn't it? Think about if you were going to plant a garden, what would you do? We would go and we'd research. We would find out what can grow well in our area. We'd find out how much sun our plants need. We would find out when we can plant so that our plants don't freeze. We'd find out everything that we can about those plants in order to be successful. And then we would plant, right? But with kids, it's the opposite. With kids, they just want to take seeds, throw them in the ground, put uh, dirt on them and water them and be done with it. They want the experience. They long for the experience because experience is actually what teaches them. Um, and when we allow experience to teach them and then use our words to help inform the experience, our words are not wasted because our words then make more sense to them because they've had this experience. Kids are actually not fully equipped to understand abstract concepts um, until they reach about puberty. So music is very abstract. Music theory is extremely abstract. And so um, they're really not able even in their brains to quite fully understand it, especially with just words, which is why things like Japanese erasers that you hear teachers talking about all the time, that's why that's effective. It's not just a fun game. It's not just something fun we do in lessons. It's actually helping us take an abstract concept and putting it in a physical experience so that our students can actually understand what's happening with the concept. I think that there are a lot more things that kids can do and experience at the piano than our method books allow. Now, I want to go on record as saying I am um, pro method book. So I think it's really good, very important for most teachers to use a method book. 
um, because I think method books help keep us accountable. They help us know that um, we're not making any big gaps in our teaching. They help us make sure that we teach the most fundamental concepts. And so I like method books, but, and every method book is different. And there are some method books that are better than others. They all have uh, their pros and cons. But one of the things that method books has to do because of the nature of books is they have to present things in a linear way. You, you turn a page and you experience one concept before you turn a page and experience the other concept. So one thing has to be done before another thing is done. And it's really hard to get those experiences where all of those things are done simultaneously. So I think there's some things that method books um, don't really have the ability to do very well um, because it's just something that's not able to be explained um, in the logical order that you would normally do for a method book. For example, using the pedal. Now, some method books will put the pedal down every once in a while, and that's great, but using the pedal in different ways, there's lots that can be done with that with students at a young age. Using the whole piano, now, yes, a method book will take a student and say, move from this position up an octave and back down. But is that using the whole piano? Is that using the piano in a way that students, you've seen kids, not students, you've seen kids walk over to a piano and just start playing, right? And doesn't sound good to us, but they think it sounds wonderful because they're experiencing the whole piano and it sounds big and it sounds broad and it sounds amazing. Those are the kinds of experiences that we want kids to have because that's what gets kids excited about the piano. So moving just to one octave and moving back is not using the whole piano. I think moving around to different notes and positions is important, especially in those early years of lessons. So for instance, um, yes, in method books, typically we move from middle C position up an octave and then back down. That's moving, but that's not moving to different positions. So what happens is we get, have kids that get stuck in particular positions because they're not actually moving their hand during a piece to new positions. But if we were to start that earlier in a solid pedagogical way, I think it's very possible for kids to not only do that, but then not be afraid when it happens in a piece of music playing eighth notes. I know um, the Curious Piano teachers um, have talked about this. You guys um, have encouraged teachers and uh, as teachers of the Curious Piano teachers, you're probably already, do already doing this, but we can teach students to not only play, but experience eighth notes, um, even though the method books haven't taught it yet. I mean, in, in the States here, the method book is usually at least, there's at least three books that happen before an eighth note is ever introduced. And that can happen a lot sooner. And this is something that I'm especially passionate about right now, using black keys and white keys in the same piece. So typically in a method book, we start kids on the black key and we play black key, black key, black key, black key, black key piece, black key, black key, black key, black key right? And then we move to the white keys and we play white key, 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 white key. White key. Why key, why key, why key, why key, sometimes for years before we actually introduce the concept of a sharp or a flat, even months. And so they end up doing either or, but not both at the same time. And the problem is we end up with kids who are afraid of playing in other keys. We end up with students who are stuck in C position or middle C position or whatever their method book used. We get kids who are anxious about moving around the piano, adults too, who are anxious about that. Then worst case scenario, they get bored with lessons because they used to be able to just do this at home, right? And play all over the piano and it was fun for them. And then in lessons and piano lessons, they're suddenly stuck and they're not really experiencing the whole piano and they don't have the excitement that's coming from using the whole piano. And then worst case scenario, they eventually want to quit. We don't want that, obviously. So I think there's ways of, of incorporating these things in lessons. I think we have to immerse our students in the wonder of the piano. The wonder that happened when they pressed the piano or the pedal for the first time and started playing notes and really loved that big, broad sound that made them sound mature. But I also think we need to embrace music that pushes experience in a solid pedagogical way. There are bad ways of doing this kind of experience. You can't just prioritize experience and introduce eighth notes willy-nilly um, or things like that. For instance, if you put a young student's two and three finger 
on the two black keys. And you, then you said, okay, well, I'm gonna introduce white notes, white keys too, and make, make sure that they're playing white keys and black keys in the same piece. And you tried to have that fourth finger play the E, that would not be good, right? Um, because that, that fourth finger is not gonna be able to easily go down and play that without getting some kind of funky, very, very um, unhealthy position for students. And so these experiences have to be um, they have to be introduced in solid pedagogical ways. This is what I'm trying to do by creating music kids love. I write a lot of music um, in a year and I don't publish it all. Um, for every one piece, there might be three pieces that I actually wrote, but only one piece that got published because we want to make sure that it is really, truly music kids love that has this solid pedagogy. It's music that explores the whole piano. It's music, like I said, that's really got thought behind it as to what's possible for students, what's possible pedagogically, and what's important pedagogically. And then music that's based on kids' interests, not adults. Now, bear with me for a minute as I, as I explain this. I think that in the past, uh, publishers have often started with the pedagogy and said, okay, we need a piece that teaches this. And so the pedagogy comes first and then they try to write about something the kids like underneath the umbrella of the pedagogy. Well, I've tried to flip flop that and say, okay, what is a child interested in first? What kind of music at the piano would make them want to practice the piano, would make them want to continue with lessons with you as a teacher? And then start with that and bring the pedagogy in. And yes, the pedagogy is as important. It's not in any way sacrificed. But the first thing that I try to ask is what is going to make this student really motivated? And that's one of the goals that I have, which is probably why not everything gets published that gets written. And then one thing that I'm also pretty passionate about is outrageously appealing covers. Think about this for a minute. Um, 20 years ago, this probably happened to you, 20 years ago, I was able to say to a student, now, um, Nelly, um, I want you to listen to this piece of music. Ignore the cover, because I know the cover is just kind of weird looking and juvenile looking. Listen to the music, though, because you'll love the music. And they'd be like, OK. And they would settle into the music. And if they like the music, they might play it for the uh, recital, because I typically have given students a, a bit of a choice, a bit of a choice. Um, nowadays, though, that cover is going to immediately bias the student against the piece. And it's just because we're just a, a visual society. Instagram, um, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, YouTube probably started it, um, but we're just visual. And so even us as teachers, we just instantly judge, even subconsciously, we instantly judge something and children especially judge pieces of music by the cover. So we've tried to always make sure that the cover is just gets, gets just as much ten, attention as the music itself. So I want to introduce you to some music today that helps this whole experience thing and gets the experience of loving the piano and moving around and uh, learning um, in front of, of um, the actual concepts and then making sure that those concepts are there so that when you talk about the concepts, um, it actually makes more sense to students. All right, so the first set of pieces I want to introduce is from our Rote and Reading series. I know you all know about Rote teaching because I know you've had a curiosity box about this before and you've um, talked with um, Julie and Catherine from Piano Safari, so you're familiar with it. Um, these are sets of pieces that not only you can teach by rote, but I encourage you to also um, help students learn to read as you're teaching by rote. And I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. So it's rote and reading. You can teach it by rote or reading, but I would encourage you to do it by both. So African Adventure is one of the series. Canadian Adventure is one of the series. American Adventure is one of the series. And the newest one is the Amazon Adventure. So I'm going to introduce these pieces to you real quickly. Monkeying Around is one of the pieces in the Amazon series. And this you can teach, like I said, by rote, by reading, or a combination of rote and reading, which is what I would advocate for. And there's lots that can be said about rote and reading, but I'll just tell you just a couple little um, high level sort of not rules, but guidelines that will sort of help you know how you can actually make sure that the rote teaching you're doing is, is pushing towards reading as well. 
always play the piece first. We want to inspire our students with beautiful performances. So you modeling the, the piece to the student is very important. And then you play and have them play the first motive. So for instance, in this piece, I'll show it to you in a minute, um, but it goes like this. That's the first motive. And so you teach just that motive and then you start looking at the score and asking questions. And you say, okay, those two measures are what you just learned. What about the next two measures? How are they the same? How are they different? How about the next two measures? How are they the same? How are they different? Do the notes move up? Do the notes move down? Um, does it look like it's far apart or close together? All kinds of just questions um, and answers that you can ask the student that will help them start to look at the score um, for visual cues about what to do. That's all reading is, it's just a cue about what to say or what to play. Then you ask them to play with that knowledge. So you say, oh, well, you just told me that you play the same thing three times without any changes. Can you do that for me? And then they can do it. Typically, they might have a few pauses. That's OK um, when you're first teaching it to them. But they've actually done a little bit of reading in the music um, as you're teaching them by rote. And then, um, like I said, as you're teaching them the concepts, you're giving them the experience, um, then you're teaching them the concepts as they're experiencing the piece. And then you do that through the piece. Don't do too much when you're uh, teaching by rote. That's typically the mistake that I see teachers make is they try to teach the whole piece and ask the student to remember it. Just teach a small section. And if you've actually used the music to teach it, then when they get home, if they forget it, they can use the music to know what to do. So the music is important. Um, a lot of teachers ask, well, how do I keep my students um, remembering what they're supposed to practice during the week? That's why you give them the score because they're also looking at the music um, with for cues. All right, this particular piece has versatile fingering for students who are less dexterous. Um, instead of using one, one, three, three, two, two, one, one with the left hand. If you have a young student, that's kind of a hard fingering for them to do. And so just using the two finger, two, 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 two. And I try to put those kinds of suggestions in the music because sometimes when we're stuck in teaching or we're um, just kind of teaching as we go, uh, we don't always think, oh, we can change things about the music to enable it for a student. We always want to encourage you. Um, as composers, Diane Heidi is this way too. Um, we always want to encourage you to um, adjust things to help make sure that it's appropriate to the student and what their hand um, position and, and shape and things like that is. And it's mischievous students get to speed up in the middle of it. So it sounds really exciting. Then there's an easy improvisation and you, a section. And as you know, in improvisation, um, you have to have boundaries, right? If you don't have boundaries, it becomes really scary. And so starting kids out improvising with the piano with boundaries helps them. So for instance, in this section, it just says monkey around on any C sharp and D on the piano. You can use any rhythm, single notes, double notes, both notes, any speed you want. So I'll show you just a random improvisation. I'm not gonna do anything fancy. It would be more like a student. Um, so this is the beginning of the piece. I'll go ahead and play the whole piece so you can hear it, but this is what it looks like. I don't know if you have that trouble, but at any rate, that was the improvisation section that sounded kind of random, but then it brings it back um, to the students um, after that. The second piece in this particular uh, set is called Jaguar Jungle, and this is a simple introduction to syncopation. Typically, we think about syncopation as being eighth notes, but there's um, syncopation that includes quarter notes. Um, dum, dum, da, dum, dum, da. So 
something that happens on a beat that's typically weak and carries over into a strong beat, that would be syncopation. So in this piece, it starts with syncopation. Well, that's hard for a student to do because that first beat, that downbeat is something the body really needs. So I would encourage you to use words to help students to know exactly what to do. So for instance, the word wait or stop, if you use the word wait or stop on that note that's supposed to be held, that will typically help the student to do that exact thing as they're playing it. So you might say something like sneaking away right here, sneaking away right here, sneaking away right here, that kind of thing. So this introduces a syncopation. This is lots of repetition. Um, and you can see we start the students on the ledger lines that's okay. <laughs> Starting them on the ledger lines with an easy piece is a great way to make sure that they know um, not to be afraid of the ledger line. So there's lots of repetition that will get them not afraid of that D, not afraid of that C. It's very story-based. You all know kids love stories, so it really helps children to insert dynamics and feeling when they can imagine this jaguar um, sneaking and trying to pounce on something, which he does at the end. he bounces and and is victorious at the very end and then the last piece in this particular series one of my personal favorites is uh, river dolphins I don't know if you know it but there's actually dolphins in the Amazon River and I didn't know that so this has a very mature sound and it especially helps kids and adults and teens because they're the ones that are going to love this um, from getting stuck in C major, it gets them in the black key. So the right hand is always on F sharp and C sharp. And so they, they don't have any kind of special bookmarks. You know how black keys are bookmarks for where you are on the white keys. So they're just kind of up there, but they're there consistently. So it helps them um, be comfortable with that. It uses the entire piano. Again, satisfying for all ages, especially for older students. You can use this for a variety of levels too. river dolphins and I didn't lift the pedal at all in that piece and you might think oh that's going to get muddy because you use some half steps in there by switching the whole tone scale but it doesn't it still has that sort of um, just river sort of watery type effect okay so that is Amazon Adventure and just so you know if you've not purchased any of these adventures before um, when you purchase the bundle of all three of them together you get this extra um, bonus cover and so a lot of teachers use this as a reward when a student does all three pieces in the series they get this bonus cover but if you purchase them individually that bonus cover doesn't come with it so just keep that in mind okay little fuzzies is um, a really fun piece I absolutely had a blast using this or uh, uh, composing this and I love it for several reasons one kids don't get stuck so you can see you'll see a little bit better in a minute that the the hands are moving so the hand starts with the two finger on d then it moves to g then it moves to a and then it just goes up the chromatic scale so they're not going to get stuck in a position it uses white and black keys, not either or. Um, there's definitely patterns. You can hear it, um, teach it by rote, and kids love fuzzies. Um, and I have some right here. I have at least two here. 
So you can see this. Um, there's so many ways you can use this. We have a blog post about this. I think um, lots of classroom teachers have used these over the years. I know lots of piano teachers use them as well. What I'm gonna do right now is I am going to share with you a um, video and this video, it, because it's a, a duet, um, it's hard for me to demonstrate with you without a video. So here is the video of Little Fuzzies. don't need to be afraid of those little eighth notes. That's a little ditty that a lot of students know. And if they don't know it, you can easily teach them. They don't have to know how to read eighth notes to do that. Da, 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 da. They just can usually get it typically without uh, too much hassle. Um, we have a blog post about um, using little fuzzies. Amanda, who uh, works with Compose Create, used to be a classroom teacher and is a piano teacher now. And um, she has a great post about all the ways that you can little, use little fuzzies in your uh, piano teaching. I know lots of other teachers have talked about this too. Um, so feel free to uh, visit that little blog post. You can always search for the word fuzzies on the blog post and get it if you don't write this uh, URL down. So, okay, the next set of pieces is a set of late elementary pieces. A lot of teachers said, Wendy, I want you to write more music kids love at the late elementary level because I've got students who are maturing, um, but they don't want like super kitty covers, but they're not really ready for this really super, you know, emotional things. We want something that um, just is, is got lots of vibrant um, action in it. And so these three pieces are fun ones that I um, decided to write. Minor Squabble um, is, uh, is one that looks hard to play, but it's super easy. Um, when you watch me play, it's kind of hard to see because I'm so far away, but you can see by the music that the right hand is over the left and it almost looks like a visual tongue twister or a hand twister or a finger twister, but it's actually really easy for students to play once they get it. Um, there's built-in seisuras here to help students who can't move quickly. When I was writing it, I realized, oh my goodness, this is like a perpetual motion piece. And so um, I noticed that there's a couple places that students were probably going to struggle with. So I thought, oh, I'll put in a couple of seisuras to help them. Well, come to find out, I love them. I love the seisuras because they sort of give the the perpetual motion piece kind of a break in it. Um, and there's so many pedagogical moments in here, so many opportunities to teach everything from sharps to flats to accidentals, all kinds of things. And it's impressive sounding because it's just really fun and moves quickly. So here's how minor squabble sounds. <laughs> things probably a little faster than I need to play. So just keep that in mind. You can play it more slowly and it's still a successful piece. Okay, jittery is the second one in the series. It's hoppy, it's happy, it's excellent for articulation practice, just like all three of these pieces. There's an exciting B section, again, uses the entire piano. So it sounds like this. So 
I'm sorry, that's the end of it. I sounded like that. It, it actually had more to it, but it doesn't. Okay, transformation is the third piece in the uh, series. And this is my favorite because there's a literal transformation of the keys and styles. So, you know, those students who only want to play fast music and they only want to play loud music or the opposite is also true students who only want to play the beautiful smooth melancholy music right um, this actually has a transformation in the piece so you get them to do both um, it contains both melancholy and spirited music and it's really one of those culmination pieces it helps students to move ahead it's sort of a, a milestone in their um, in their piano Right. So we've called this our energy bundle, which is a small uh, bundle that you can get, but it's our energy bundle for obvious reasons. Okay, the next uh, couple of pieces come from what we call our mythical creatures collection. This is a really popular um, set of pieces. If we were live, I'd ask how many of you are already using one of these pieces because so many teachers are unicorns, mermaids, dragons, leprechauns. Um, in addition to the beautiful cover, which we always include with all of our music. You also get this wonderful um, coloring sheet that our artists made. So it's got a bonus with it. Um, there was a teacher that wrote to me recently that just told me a way that she used the coloring sheet that I thought was really helpful, especially these days when everything is so hard and kids are experiencing, experiencing a lot of the stress as well. They don't know how to articulate it, but they don't often articulate anything about it, but they're experiencing it too. And so she wrote me this little story. I don't expect you to read it. I'm gonna read it to you, but this is what she said. She said, I had a five-year-old come in this week and just completely shut down. He didn't want to leave his mom's side. He refused to do any of our usual activities or even approach the piano. And he didn't really wanna to talk to me. This was extremely unusual. I've been teaching him for months and he's always been engaged and enthusiastic. We were totally stuck. And on a whim, I gave him the Mermaid Wishes coloring sheet and I played for him while he colored. Afterward, we talked about the different things we imagined while listening to the music and he warmed right up. He was so excited to describe the mermaid swimming through the water and the different sea creatures that he saw. So sometimes taking students away from the piano and letting them do something almost mindless but relaxing like coloring can really help them come out of where they're at if you're having trouble connecting or just knowing what they're thinking. So I thought that was a creative use of this. So here are our two new mythical creatures, fairy dust and troll trouble. Uh, fairy dust, as you can see, comes with this beautiful coloring sheet. Um, this is a great piece for teaching um, and reviewing, especially reading by intervals, because students really have to look and see what the interval is that's coming next. The students won't get stuck in a position. You can't see it now very well, but you'll be able to see it in a minute. But the left hand has the third finger on A initially, then the next two measures, it moves down to G, then it moves back up to A, then it moves down to G, then it moves up to A. And the idea is to get them to just be used to moving a little bit so that they don't get stuck in positions. The title helps the touch. So for example, when you're playing the C sharp, that's where you tell them, that's where the fairy dust is. Don't throw the fairy dust too hard, just sprinkle it.
I was recording this piece uh, for the product video, and um, I didn't know that my teenage son was listening to me, and I was talking about how that C-sharp should be like the fairy dust, and, and talking about how fairy dust sounds, and all of this, and my teenage son said, hey, mom, didn't know you knew so much about fairy dust, and <laughs> I just had to laugh, just one of those moments where you realize everybody in the house during COVID is listening to you, <laughs> so anyway, um, it's just one of those pieces that I think um, any student who's interested in fairies will really enjoy. Now, Troll Trouble, I really enjoyed writing because it's different than the other pieces, because as you can imagine, trolls are heavy, right? And they're uh, big sounding, and I didn't want to write a piece, though, that sounded like the troll was mean. I didn't want to encourage violence. I didn't want to encourage um, bullying. I didn't want to encourage any of those things. And so I really just put a lot of thought into how could I possibly um, write a piece about a troll that um, helps students maybe, I don't know, just gives them a different perspective on people. So just a minute, you'll see how. Um, this features reading in the bass clef, because as you know, that's difficult at first. Um, this, there's subtle moves. So the um, right hand... Each time it's that interval of a third, but they're moving from white to black to white. Helps them get uh, keep from getting stuck. There's this stuck. Um, it's got a big sound. And then here's how it works. It helps kids think of how others might be feeling. That's one of the things I wanted to do with this. You'll see by the words what I mean. Think that they just love like that they might be have some having something going on in their lives everybody's fighting their own battles and um, maybe they're not nearly as bad as we think they are all right so i want to i've got two more pieces to talk about but i just wanted to let you know that all of pieces that i've talked about so far are in what we call our august 2021 new release bundle that actually includes that bonus cover for amazon adventure it includes the bonus coloring sheets for the fairy dust and troll piece so all of those are included in this bundle there's a special sale price and a coupon i'm going to give you here in a few minutes but i just wanted to let you know all of those so far are in this bundle um, I want to talk about Owl's Nocturne uh, real quick. This is a piece that Diane Heidi wrote, and it's got beautiful uh, harmonies in it. Um, just really, really gorgeous. I'm going to have, I'm going to show you a video of her playing it, and it's just enchanting. Um, it's emotionally complex. It's a great way to introduce your students to uh, nocturnes. You could even play a nocturne of Chopin's after here, after uh, something like this, so they can see similarities and just the evocative nature of it. And then it uses the whole um, keyboard. So it's just, again, one of those pieces of music that really involves the whole piano. And then there's an introduction to the whole tone scale in here. So I'm going to, I have to open it up real quick. So let me get it open here. And I am going to share this with you so you can hear Diane um, playing it. So here it is. <laughs>
Isn't that gorgeous? Just a beautiful piece of music. So that's Al's Nocturne. Um, another piece that I want to share with you is called Pretty Creepy. As you know, this is the time of year that people are, um, some people are um, wanting to play some creepy music and scary sounding music. And so I wanted to write a piece, um, especially for teenagers and preteens and students who wanted to have that sort of um, feeling, um, but at the same time would be really uh, mature sounding and not be kid-like because a lot of uh, music like this is very kid-like. So um, I wanted to write something that was both pretty and creepy. Um, and um, I ended up calling it pretty creepy because obviously, um, hopefully it does that. Um, it's perfect for preteens, teens, and adults. And um, this is how it sounds. Right, so those two pieces are actually not in any bundle. So I just want to make sure um, that you know that other bundle doesn't include these two, but these two are available as individual pieces. Now we do have specials going on and also a coupon specifically for um, Curious Piano Teachers. We rarely do coupons on the site because um, people forget them and things like that, but we decided to make sure we did one for you guys. All the pieces and the resources we talked about are digital and studio licensed, and that means you only ever have to purchase them one time. So you purchase a piece one time and you can use it over and over and over again for any student that you personally directly teach. So it's like getting an unlimited supply of a piece of music that kids love. Um, you can email or print the PDF to students that you're directly teaching um, the piece to, and then each teacher has to purchase their own studio license. So you can't share it with other teachers, even if you're in a multi-teacher studio, that kind of thing puts me out of business. So please don't do that. Um, each teacher needs to purchase their own uh, particular studio license of it, and then they can use it over and over again with students they directly teach. So here's the coupon code, write this down, CPT Adventure, doesn't matter if it's all caps or partly caps or anything like that. Um, CPT Adventure, this will give you 10% off all the new individual pieces, except for Pretty Creepy, because that one's already on sale for 10% off. Or the big August, ooh, 2000, or I said 201, this is not the year um, 201, this is 2021. Anyway, the August 2021 bundle um, is already discounted a little bit. So if you add this coupon to it, it's actually going to give you um, the same kind of price that we had for um, the webinar where we always give um, the best prices. So this will give you even bigger discount if you uh, purchase the bundle than if you purchase the individual pieces and apply the coupon. Um, this does expire Friday, uh, September the 17th, so keep that in mind. Um, so again, this applies to this big bundle, the August 2021 new release bundle, and uh, normally that would be $89.91 because they're each individually $9.99. It's on sale right now for $84.99 with the coupon, it ends up being $76.49. And then with the coupon, Al's Nocturne is $8.99, Pretty Creepy is already on sale for $8.99. 
Okay, real quick, I'll try to only take five minutes explaining this, but I want to address something that lots of teachers, not lots, but a few teachers asked at the end of the rhythm webinar that we had um, for the uh, curious piano teachers back in January, I think it was January or February teachers. Oh, I'm sorry. I, you can also go hold on bookmark. You can go um, and use our search box if you're trying to find an individual piece. Um, one of the easiest ways to find it is to use the search box, or you can just go to shop and you can scroll down because uh, the latest releases are always at the top of the page. Okay, so here's the question that teachers asked us at the end of webinar. Can you make an affordable way for students to get the rhythm tracks? We've been brainstorming about this for years. And I just haven't been able to come up with a way that we could feasibly do this. Um, and so we actually did this summer. And so this is what I just want to real quick tell you about it for those of you who are using our rhythm, um, rhythm um, curriculum. We came up with um, streaming tracks. Streaming tracks are music tracks for, for, the, for rhythm menagerie, manipulations, and rhythm cup explorations that we make accessible to students and teachers on Compose Create in an organized, always at your fingers kind of way. So when you get into the tracks, this is what it looks like. You can see that there's all kinds of things here. You can play it directly from there. You can see the tempo very clearly. You can even see the color of the cup. So at a glance, you know what unit you're at. If you're in Rhythm Cup Explorations, you can navigate by unit. So for instance, here's unit two. Notice how the track numbers changed and also the cup colors change. Unit four, track numbers change cup colors changed. In addition, when you're in the tracks, um, and when you purchase the tracks and you're in the tracks, the streaming tracks, um, you get you get to see a new menu. And on the new menu, that allows you to toggle between the books. So if you are in Rhythm Cup Explorations 1, which we're in right now, and you want to go to Unit 4, Rhythm Menagerie, you mouse over Menagerie, you get this drop down menu, click Unit 4, and boom, you're there. You're in Unit 4. And then the page numbers are over on the side, and then you go to page 43, and then voila, um, number third track number 37 is there. Um, if you want to go to Manipulations, Unit 2 from there, you can just mouse over Manipulations. It drops down, go to Unit 2, and then you're there in Rhythm Manipulations. If you want to go to My First Rhythm Cup Explorations, boom, you just click on that, you're there. Rhythm Cup Explorations 2, you're there. Um, if you want to return to the main site and the main menu at any time, you just click on the home um, button and you can go to the home screen. So um, some teachers want to know, well, how do these work on mobile? Because, oh, but I, the slide that I didn't put in here for you is actually the slide that tells you that these actually work on every single device as long as it has internet access. So it's not just an iPhone. It's not like an iPhone app. It's not an app. Um, it's it works on an iPhone, but it also works on an Android phone. It works on a Google phone. It works on your laptop. It works on your tablet. It works on your iPad. It works on all of those things. And so um, we've made it to where it um, just looks beautiful, uh, no matter where it's um, where it's used. So let me show you real quick. Um, let me show you a quick video about how it looks on mobile. So this is that video. Once you are in your tracks, you will see some helpful navigation over on the side. For My First Rhythm Cup Explorations, there's just three simple units. So you can click on unit one and you'll see all of these tracks. You can click on play um, to hear any of them. So this is track six. All right, and then if you want to go to unit two, boom, all of your track numbers change and you can see clearly exactly where the track numbers are. Now, if you want to toggle and get to a new book, just go up into the menu and let's go into Rhythm Cup Explorations 1 and look. Um, in the unit one, you can see all of these tracks that are in here. There's only nine tracks in that particular unit. Unit two, it starts numbering again. So these track numbers go perfectly with what's in your book, uh, your Rhythm Cup Explorations one book. And here are your tracks. They just play immediately because they're streaming. Um, Rhythm Cup Explorations two, you get the idea, but all of these are um, organized by units. Now, once you get into Rhythm Menagerie, as you know, there's over 800 tracks and so you can just click on this um, 
uh, drop down menu right here and get to your unit exactly what you need immediately. So we're going to go to unit four very quickly and look, unit four has page uh, uh, on page 40 um, are these tracks and you can see them uh, labeled. They're according to page now, of course, because it's a bigger book. So page 42 has tracks 25 through track 36. Page 47 has tracks 85 through 96. And of course, like I said, those co perfectly coincide with exactly what's written in the book in the manipulations. And I'm uh, just going to stop the video right there, but you can get, you get the idea of how they work on mobile. So that's what they, that's how they look on mobile. So basically just um, a quick overview, students can afford these now. So it's a monthly charge, you can cancel at any time. There's actually the first month is free even. So you can just tell your students, okay, I want you to get the streaming tracks for Rhythm Menagerie, send them the link. We can also help make sure that you give them the right link and then they can go get those particular streaming tracks. Um, they play, like I said, from any device. Um, and you can also purchase these as well if you didn't purchase the, um, if you didn't purchase the downloadable tracks um, when we talked about the Rhythm Menagerie and all of those things, then you can purchase them as well. If you did purchase them, you want to use the streaming tracks, you can certainly do that. We're not going to take away your um, downloadable tracks. Um, those are yours, you've paid for them. And so you keep those, you can keep using those. Um, we originally created this for um, to solve the problem with students affording them, but we know a lot of teachers will start to use it because it's such a, a, a beautiful um, at your fingertips type of experience. Um, so um, real quick, just a couple notes um, from what teachers have asked us, just so you know, parents get um, their own streaming tracks. It's nothing that you have to manage. So if you tell them to go buy it and they buy it, if they have a problem, they contact us. We take care of them just like we would take care of you if you purchase something. And then you can send them a link to the tracks and you can put in this wording. We have this in a blog post. You can copy that later. And we've had teachers say, well, um, how do I tell parents to do this? Parents at the age that they are know how to do this. You just say these are streaming a streaming track subscription. Here's the link, buy this. They know exactly what to do. They know how to create an account so you don't have to worry about instructions and things like that. Um, okay, so typically if you were to purchase all of them together, like if you were a teacher that wanted to put them all together, regular price if you added them all up would be this. They're on sale for $10.99 right now a month for the first month free. And then if you put in the coupon code streaming, this coupon code is due is um is good through this friday because we just had our rhythm webinar launch these last week then you can get an additional dollar off for the first 12 months and um then um, you also get the first month free and then you're locked into that 10.99 a month so if these ever go up then uh, you'll be in at that 10.99 because you purchased them for that on sale but you'll get them for 9.99 for the first 12 months um don't forget to apply the coupon code and this is for anything we've talked about today the cpt adventure coupon or the streaming coupon Coupon, you would put in the coupon code on your cart. It's not on the checkout page. It's on the cart page and you apply the coupon code. It's right underneath where all of your things are. So, um, and these are the um, individual ones. They're all available individually. So if you just have a student in Menagerie, that's the only one they need to get. If you just have a student in Rhythm Cup Explorations 1, that would be the only one that you would send to them. And they can always, um, once they're done with a book, they can cancel their subscription because they can cancel at any time and start a new subscription for the next book in the series. So. Okay, so these are all the things that um, we have and I've talked about. And now, um, uh, Sharon and Sally, if you want to come on, um, I I hope that all made sense, but we probably have some questions. So, yay. Oh, fabulous. Thank you so much. So, mm -hmm. so much, Wendy. Um, I asked a question. Um, I A few moments ago, I said, Okay, guys, have you got a favorite piece from today's webinar? Let us know. And I love Sarah's response. She said, what a question, Sharon. They are all so imaginative. Aww. I want all of them. And okay. I think it's fair to say that we have all had a wonderful time. We, as piano teachers, we always love listening to music. So thank you so much for playing through Good. such a rich resource. Um, thank you. Well, it was fun to share them. Sometimes in presentations, you only play a part of a piece, but I just, you know, there's sometimes you just have to play the whole piece. And I think I played all of the pieces that way. Yeah. So I hope that's okay. Yeah, what, what I love in particular, Wendy, with your compositions, and you know that usually in September, I head over to your website and I, I, yeah. I download a few, you know, that yeah. I use because 
they're so they are so imaginative but they're also well crafted mm -hmm. and the fact that you've thought about all the pedagogical implications behind a piece i mm -hmm. i just absolutely love them and i've just been making loads of notes here oh, and thanks. even though i've only got you know a handful of pupils at the moment because sure. my move coming up right, i've been right. oh yes yeah, she would like that one and <laughs> yes okay so the ones i have got they're all because when we get new repertoire like this it energizes us as teachers as mm -hmm. well as our students doesn't it yeah 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 it's it's amazing what just a little bit of different yeah. music yeah. um can just do for us because yeah i there are even methods sometimes you get bored with this teaching the same yeah. piece over and over again. So it's nice to have a variety of methods to use, mm -hmm. even if for no other reason for yourself and your sanity. So, <laughs> and, and those sound worlds, you know, such diversity. Um, and just seeing here from the comments, um, we're also getting a lot of loves for the coloring sheets as well. Um, mm -hmm. And even just those, the, the imagination that your music sparks off. And, and we know that as teachers, how important it is that um, our students do come to music making with a multi-sensory experience. And we were talking yeah. about the fairy dust and you know, just throwing it more yeah. gently. And it's sometimes rather than saying to our students, okay, just needs to be a little bit more quiet. Sometimes right. that can be really quite meaningless. Yeah. But they absolutely. get so much more purposeful when we actually talk about the fairy mm -hmm. dust and, mm -hmm. and getting them to kind of create their own mind images. So yeah. Um, yeah. really lovely really lovely now there is one question which is yeah. from jane and that's just to do with the tracks actually she yeah. says she has menagerie downloadable tracks but not manipulations are okay. the manipulations tracks downloadable or only streaming you right now you can purchase either so if you are are doing a great job with the downloadable tracks with rhythm menagerie and you want something to match it so you have it all uh -huh. in the same format absolutely you can go back and get um the regular um, manipulations tracks just make sure the word streaming is not on the uh, title of the item that you would be getting or in the picture um, because we tried to make sure that anything that was streaming actually says streaming on it um, so you know whether it's streaming if you don't see streaming then you would um, assume that it's downloadable. So, yeah, good okay. question. Super. Oh, and awesome. I like this comment from Yvonne mm. that she's saying where there are repeated patterns in pieces, she uses a lot of highlighting, which the pupils yes. love, of course, and the piece makes sense in a in a yeah. colourful way, I would think. So she would she would highlight things that were similar with one yeah. colour and then, yeah. Yeah. oh, that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, really nice. And probably get the student to do, you do start it off with them, and then that can be part of their practice is to continue right. that at home. That would be really well, good. Well, and visually, it's so much faster to to learn when you actually see those repetitions it it's is. just yeah you get the big picture you do, you do, you yeah. do. Yeah. yeah yeah lovely so really i think sad. this is your last opportunity to ask any other questions yeah, any but questions everybody's just been entranced by you oh, um, joe says love all the pieces so sophisticated Thank sounding you. and beautiful artwork yeah Thank so you. it sounds like sarah has been straight in there and she has bought the studio bundle even oh. before we come off the call <laughs> oh my goodness well good i hope yeah our goal is to make things easy to find easy to buy things like that so i'm glad she was already able to do that that's fantastic thank you sarah <laughs> wonderful so what we're going to do is just remind you all of that compose create um it's actually just there it's still on the screen so um if you haven't yet been able to visit wendy's website um composecreate.com and obviously if you've got any questions there is um the email support at composecreate.com uh we will be getting the webinar replay out to you guys later on and i'm just putting also into uh into the chat there um the curious piano teachers brochure where um you can have a little bit of a flick through find out a little bit more about us um, there is a free month if you want to sign up, and I think it was about two, two years ago, maybe three, no, I think it's about two years ago, we had um, a curiosity box featuring um, teaching by road. So um, that kind of ties in really quite perfectly with all of what has been um, discussed and explored today. So um, do head over there and find out a little bit more 
So I just want to finish off by saying, Wendy, thank you so, so much for your time mm, for being pleasure. here today. We always love working so much with Likewise. Wendy. We um, are always so aligned um, in our thinking, in our pedagogy. And um, it is just wonderful to, to connect and to share um, because we all contribute differently. And mm -hmm. we want to say a big thank you to you guys out there, the piano teachers, mm -hmm. um, for actually putting all of this stuff into practice with the music makers of tomorrow. Nice. So if you're off to teach now, have a wonderful uh, afternoon's teaching. Do head over and get that music. Can I just say real quick, thanks so much to Sally and Sharon for having me. Like you said, um, the alignment of our philosophies and things like that is always so exciting. And it's so nice to be able to know that whatever I say is probably going to complement something you've already said and you've already created. And it just, we need to hear it in different ways in order to know how to, to really effectively do it. And sometimes so it true. helps with one person talking about it. And then um, with another concept, it doesn't, doesn't make sense until someone else explains it a different way. So I love, I love that we can continue to do that with each other. It's, it's a great uh, privilege. And I just want to thank you for having me on. So thanks. And thanks to all the teachers who came as well. So welcome. Thank you so much, Wendy. And actually, I should say in that particular rope teaching box, I'm just thinking Diane Heidi was actually one of our mm -hmm. contributors to that. So there's yeah. actually a video of her, plus a lot of other teachers actually demonstrating how they teach rope. So yeah, it's just, it's wonderful that despite we're so many thousands of miles away, we're all so connected and yes. so aligned. Yes. So have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much for being here and stay curious. Bye for now. Thank you.